Welcome to the SharePoint PMP short video. In this video, we'll have a look on how to develop SharePoint Framework Client-Side Report for SharePoint 2016 Feature Pack 2. So one of the new capabilities in SharePoint 2016 Feature Pack 2 is the support for hosting your client-side web parts, so SharePoint Framework client-side web parts in on-premises in the SharePoint 2016. And this is actually a pretty cool capability because that means that your SharePoint Framework client-side web parts can be hosted in both SharePoint Online and also in on-premises. And in this video, we'll have a look on what does it actually mean because there are certain things which we need to be aware from a versioning perspective when we do development of a client-side web part for SharePoint 2016 Feature Pack 2 platform. So let's start by actually having a look on our situation where we are with the, within this machine. So this machine, uh, I've been using this for my personal development as a personal development machine. So we've been done doing some development already in here against the SharePoint uh, online. So if I do npm list, uh, uh, npm list, uh, oop, uh, list and G. So I'm listing uh, my install packages and the first level of the install packages in NPM, we can see that I'm actually hosting uh, SharePoint Framework 1.2 version uh, within this machine. And the one thing to be aware of the of the support, SharePoint Framework support in SharePoint 2016, a feature back too, is that we support version 1.0 uh, to be uh, used in the SharePoint Framework. So what it means is that you need to use the SharePoint Framework 1.0, or to be precise, 1.02 is an option as well, uh, as the SharePoint Framework platform when you're developing client-side web parts on top of the SharePoint 2016 feature pack too. You might be thinking that, wait, wait a minute, so how's, what is this? Why do, I, why do I need to go back slightly on the versions? And the answer is, well, the on-premises platform um, is versioned in a different way. So the version 1.2 of the SharePoint framework is released for the SharePoint Online in early August or in mid-August. Uh, the feature pack 2 for SharePoint 2016 was actually already locked back in uh, May, May, June, July timeframe, um, and then it's actually falling uh, the down premises. Um, and so the basic challenge what we have here is that the on-premises environment and the versioning of the on-premises environment is different. We cannot push the server-side environments and server-side updates to the, to the server-side of on-premises because obviously the person Owns, uh, the, the companies on those servers, not Microsoft does own them. So the baseline right now for the feature pack 2 for SharePoint 2016 is the SharePoint framework 1.0. And in this machine, like you can see, I have already installed the 1.2 machine, uh, 1.2 version of SharePoint framework. So how do I now go back in time to the right version? And how would I actually then use that to implement my client's hardware part and host it in SharePoint 2016? Now, there's multiple ways, obviously, on doing uh, this multi-versioning multi -versioning, uh, of SharePoint Framework. So you could use Docker, you can use multiple machines. In this particular case, I'm going to just simply do uh, an uh, un uninstallation. So I'm going to do npm un uh, uninstall, and we're going to uninstall uh, that Microsoft generator uh, SharePoint uh, from the from the machine. So this one will make sure that my existing version of the SharePoint generator is getting away from this computer. And this is going to take a while, maybe a minute, so we're going to speed up the video uh, until uh, this has been completed. And there we go. Now our package has been uninstalled uh, from this uh, computer. And like mentioned, if you're using Docker, there's a, I think the Docker would be the right solution for this. But in this particular video, we're going to use an installation and fall back on time to the right version. So now um, I'm actually going to execute npm view uh, and then uh, Microsoft uh, generator. SharePoint, so we can actually see all of the NPM packages or the version of the Microsoft generators which are available in NPM. So if I scroll down slightly on the results, uh, we're able to see that there's quite a few versions of the of the uh, SharePoint generators available, starting from really old timeframes, and then there's the 1.00, there's 1.01, 1.02 would be the one what we're looking at right now to actually use to get away with the feature back too. So how do I get that one installed? Well, uh, that's pretty simple. Uh, so I'm going to do npm install, install, whoop, uh, let's actually get that one, uh, install uh, globally. And then we're going to do Microsoft uh, 
Microsoft uh, Generator SharePoint and then we can actually specify that uh, version which we're going to install into this machine. So this is going to now install the specific version 1.02 to this particular machine. So I'm ready to do some development uh, against or together with SharePoint, uh, SharePoint 2016 feature pack 2. And this again takes some time because so we're going to speed up the video until the installation is completed. And there we go. Now the, the updated or the well, updated packets or the, the previous version of the packets has been installed. So let's actually create an, a folder for us. So let me actually clean up that one something uh, slightly. So let's create us a folder. Let's call this uh, test uh, FB2, testing feature back two. And let's actually go there, test uh, FB2. And in here, I'm going to just simply execute yo Microsoft uh, SharePoint. So we can actually do the scaffolding of our solution. So just a typical flow. And now we're using the version 1.02 of the, of the template. So let's call this uh, hello there as the solution. Uh, we're going to use the current solution, uh, current folder. We're going to use no JavaScript web framework for this time. Uh, we're going to use hello there uh, as the web part name so we can find it easily uh, hello there description is absolutely fine and now the scaffolding actually starts so and now we're scaffolding a version uh, which is created using the 1.02 version of the uh, of the packages so and this will again take a while so we're going to speed up the video and continue after we have completed that and there we go, now the scaffolding has been completed. So we're able to have a look on our code. So obviously the code structure looks exactly the same uh, because it is just the SharePoint framework, uh, SharePoint framework uh, 1.02 version, uh, which we've been using in SharePoint Online as well in the past. Now, we're not gonna actually do any actual development in here. I'm just gonna show how to get this one uh, deployed as well. Uh, and just to prove that everything works in the feature pack too. So we can obviously do observe and this is going to start then the browser uh, or start the global uh, sorry local workbench so we're able to do uh, proper testing uh, on the call observe uh, on the on the local workbench um, and I'm doing my typical typo there for some reason always writing server when I'm trying to do call observe so that's going to uh, bundle the, the solution and that's going to host uh, the local workbench so we're able to see that hello there web part uh, in practice. Good. So how do we actually then get this one uh, deployed to the uh, SharePoint 2016 feature back too? So first of all, let's do some modification. So what I've done here uh, is that I've, I've actually already created um, a hosting location uh, for my components. So I'm going to jump uh, directly to my Azure Storage Explorer, uh, which has been already connected to my Azure CDN. So in my case, right now in the demo, we kind of use the Azure CDN as the hosting location. Technically, you can absolutely host your JavaScript files and JSON files in your SharePoint 2016 environment as well. So if you're looking into using that uh, and hosting everything in your SharePoint 2016, you can absolutely do that. There's a one thing though to be aware on there. So um, as part of the files, which we will have to host somewhere, there is a two, uh, well, there's JavaScript files and then there's a JSON file. And by default in SharePoint 2016, uh, well, 2010, 2013, 2016, the JSON file format is actually blocked uh, to be uploaded to a document library. There's no risks for changing that, uh, really because it's a JSON object, a uh, JSON file. Um, but by default, unless you do any modifications on the server, you can't upload all of the needed files to the SharePoint 2016 uh, environment. So you would have to slightly adjust uh, the server settings or the farm settings to allow the JSON file to be uploaded. But in our case, we're going to use uh, CDN. Uh, so I've already created the Azure CDN uh, in my environment in my Azure subscription and we can actually bundle all of this uh, together. So let me actually flip in the Visual Studio and I'm going to update slightly my configuration because I want to update my CDN path to be uh, correctly. So if you would be hosting the JavaScript files and JSON files in the SharePoint 2016, uh, you would just pinpoint to that location, the folder in your SharePoint 2016, where those files will be hosted in here. In my case, we're gonna use the Azure CDN, like mentioned. So I'm gonna actually take that path and copy that in here. And I'm gonna use the hello world uh, container in my CDN uh, as the location. All good. 
then I'm gonna actually flip uh, back on my command line. Then I'm gonna do culp bundle dash dash ship. So that's gonna prep us for deployment. And then we need to have the SPPK2 file generated as well. So we're gonna do culp uh, package uh, solution. Let's actually, let's do this. Uh, oop, let's actually clear this and do culp package uh, solution dash dash ship. So that's going to then pack it, uh, my my bundle and everything else or the associations properly to the SPPKG file. Um, and we can double check again uh, if I go to the SharePoint folder and the debug folder and open up the manifest of my web part, uh, we can actually double check easily. Uh, oop, let's actually do that one more time. We can double check that the CDN has been properly uh, configured. So it's pointing to my, in my case, it's pointing to my CDN location. Um, in your case, it might be pointing to a local CDN in you know, a local uh, box. It slightly depends again, how do we want to do this? So now uh, that we have the solution, everything has been uh, properly configured. Uh, we can start uh, the file explorer here. So we can actually upload the solution to the app catalog. Um, so let's actually open up our SharePoint 2016. Our app catalog is in here. In our apps for SharePoint, we have few apps already available. So in this case, I'm going to go to SharePoint solution. That's my hello there SPPKG file. Let's add that one available in my SharePoint 2016 feature back to environment. Now, the second thing what we were meant to do well, first we need to obviously trust the solution and we can say that it's, it, it's pointing to the right CDN. So let's deploy that. The second thing what we need to do uh, is get our assets to the right location. So in my case, uh, those assets are in the temp and deploy folder and these are three different assets. And as you can see, one of these assets is a JSON file. And that's where we have to do some level of a modification on the, uh, on the, on the file types in the SharePoint 2016 server or the farm if you want to host your stuff in the SharePoint 2016 uh, or the JavaScript files there as well. Uh, in my case, like mentioned, we're going to actually upload all of those stuff. Upload files uh, and let's actually upload those files uh, from the PMP folder, uh, from our do -do 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 test fp2 folder. I think it was SP sp2. Let's actually double check that. Yes, it was. Uh, deploy and that's our three different files which we actually want to get in to our CDN. So I'm going to use the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer because this is super, super convenient tool for accessing your blobs and everything else to, for uploading all of the stuff. Technically, we do have a call up task to automate this upload as well, um, but just as well, you can do that manually as well. So now my files are located in here um, and solution package has been installed. We can go to our site in the SP2016 feature back two. Let's go to a, or let's actually create a page. So adding a page in the feature back too. Let's call this a demo page. And in the demo page, it's a classic page in SharePoint 2016 feature back too. Uh, it is still a classic page, uh, but in here, if I go now to insert a web part and we can open up the web part gallery. And if I scroll down in my case, we have actually missed one more step, which I almost forgot. And it's a good thing that we got it in the video. So right now the solution and the web part isn't available in here because we have only installed the solution uh, in the app catalog. And the SharePoint 2016 feature back two does not support, um, at least for now, or the feature back two doesn't support the tenant scope deployment option. So what we need to do is to make sure that that package is being installed on the site so that the, the web part is available for us to use within the site. So you can see that there's an, a different solution already available in here, but we our solution name was uh, there. Let's actually double check the name. It was hello there client side solution. So let's add that one in as well. So adding that to the uh, solution, adding that to the site and that's getting added on the site. So adding the solution to the site might take a few seconds. It might take 30 seconds. It really slightly depends on the, on the timing. Now the solution is in the site. So we can actually go back in, uh, in the page or we can actually create, let's create a new page so we don't confuse uh, that existing page. So let's call this demo page uh, retry. 
and now that's where the page is located and adding that web part uh, to the page so clicking the web part link here uh, we can now see that we have the under development uh, category available in the under development we can say the hello there if i click add we can actually see our web part getting added on the page if our references in the CDN, the URLs, everything else is correctly done, we can actually see the web part being rendered here, which is as you can see from here. And then if we do modifications on the web part, edit web part, we can see that we have the classic configure option for edit web part. Clicking that one, we can see that we have the modern uh, web part uh, editor pane or the property pane here. Hello there for uh hello there for the audience looking the demo call and it's all there we can actually close that one and click ok and the web part configuration is completed so as we can see uh, we have here in SharePoint 2016 feature pack 2 we created a client-side web part using SharePoint framework the version 1.02 uh, which we uh, moved back in time and installed that to my machine. In real world, you would probably use uh, Docker to differentiate uh, or to support running multiple different versions of the SharePoint framework in your own machine. But I wanted to go uh, step by step and show how to make that happen uh, within the one machine. If that's needed for you, uh, you can differentiate the machines. If you have multiple VMs, there's, there's multiple options how to make this happen. Maybe one thing to notice on the on the solution, you probably want to also do the NPM shrink wrap uh, or make sure that you're using the right versions or lock down the versions within your SharePoint framework solution. So that will then make sure and if we go back on the solution and if we open up the package JSON file, you can see that right now we're using the 1.00 versions and you probably want to make sure that you will always use these versions in the future as well for this solution if it's targeted for the feature pack too. And that's where the npm shrink wrap uh, would absolutely help. Uh, there's alternative options as well. It really depends again on what packaging system uh, you're using. So there's just quite a few options here and there, but probably the NPM shrink wrap is the, is the easiest thing to do. And there's a lot of guidance and documentation available on that one as well. Now, that's it. And now we created a SharePoint framework web port, uh, hosted it, hosted that in SharePoint 2016, uh, running the right version. Uh, you can see small uh, styling uh, changes in the, in the web part, and this is slightly, and this is because there are some styling differences between the web parts. The behavior is the same, but there are differences due to the fact that SharePoint Online actually moves faster, comparing to the SharePoint on-premises, because we can't push versions and updates to the on-premises because companies like the, the, the customers actually on those environments. In SharePoint Online, things are moving slightly faster, and that's the reason why there might be small differences within the styling side. Um, in future, uh, the, the selection of the web part, uh, the selection of the environment will get easier uh, when we get updated versions of the SharePoint framework packages out. Uh, so the, you do not need to fall back in time to a specific version to make all of this happen but we'll get more insights on all of these options uh, whenever those are available. Thanks for watching and hopefully this was useful.